Hey, welcome family to Fresh Truth Ministries and the Fresh Truth Podcast. Fresh Truth Ministries loves having robust talanoa conversations and kōrero about God, the Bible, Christianity, churches and society on our podcast and other content. We have guests with diverse backgrounds, different theologies and different views. Fresh Truth Ministries welcomes these courageous faith conversations, but it doesn't mean, family, that we agree with all the opinions and all the views that our guests say. Fresh Truth is clear and strong on what we believe and what we contend for. We have a statement of faith on our website, www.freshtruthministries.com, and we're happy to answer any questions you might have. We welcome honest, God-glorifying conversations and wrestling through these important issues with our different guests. Our desire is that God is glorified, the full gospel is preached, and the sufficiency and infallibility of God's precious word stands. Glory to God alone. As the psalmist beautifully says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. My Lord, love you. Hey, kia ora uh, My name is Ronji, uh, and I'm really blessed uh, to be back here uh, on the Fresh Truth podcast. Yes, we're still alive, uh, even though the hate mail is coming. We still uh, are going for the glory of God and the extension of His kingdom. Uh, just want to welcome everyone back to the Fresh Truth podcast uh, for 2024. Uh, this is the first one of the year, and we've got some really wonderful uh, young men uh, that we are going to hear from today. I just want to quickly say thank you to all those who are watching, commenting, commenting, uh, liking, sharing, uh, arguing with us, debating, uh, wrestling through doctrine and, and those things. We, we enjoy it all, to be honest, and we praise God that, that these things can be used for His glory. I uh, just want to give a quick reminder that Fresh Truth uh, is a broke-ass ministry uh, based in South Auckland. Uh, and we're passionate about God's word, passionate about sound doctrine, and passionate about standing and contending for the biblical worldview. Uh, and so thank you for all of those who have engaged with us over the last three years. Three years we've been alive, Canaan, uh, and Canaan has not been paid in any of those years. So thank you for your love towards us, Canaan. Uh, we are, uh, we'll also want to remind people that we're also on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, um, I'm launching my TikTok. No, 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 no. Uh, and, some, and we've also got our website, freshtruthministries.com. Uh, just want to also acknowledge Brother Canaan, who's always blessing us with the work. Uh, so thank you very much, Canaan, uh, for, uh, for all of your support and, and the work on the podcast. Uh, family, Fresh Truth family, I just want to um, uh, make a connection to the podcast tonight because you're probably looking at the video and you're thinking, oh my gosh, BTS, uh, Samoan <laughs> BTS is here and who are these good looking young men, uh, sorry, four young men, good <laughs> for three and a half young men and so uh, these are three young men and there is a connection here, these young men uh, we're all part of the same church, uh, which is uh, one connection. I am related to one of them who will introduce himself later on. But I just want to um, introduce uh, to those who are watching or listening, uh, uh, Brother Nathaniel, Brother Christian, and Brother Yeti. Uh, and you're going to hear the introductions very, very soon because I want to, before they share, I actually want to read something that I think is quite relevant uh, to them as young men. And it's from Daniel chapter 3. And many of you know the, the, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They would not bow down uh, to King Nebuchadnezzar. Isn't it interesting, eh? The, the king went and built his own statue of himself. Talk about vain. And then the king says that he's about to kill these guys, throw them in the fiery furnace. And then in uh, verses 17 and 18, uh, the three young men say, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Verse 18, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Uh, family, the reason why we brought these young men is not to elevate them or to glorify them, but actually to glorify what God is doing uh, in their lives, to honor what the Lord is doing in their lives. And uh, when I thought about these young men from church, but also in ministry that we've served together, I thought about these three young men uh, who uh, were not willing to bow down to what the world offered, uh, but were willing to stand, uh, literally, hey, literally, uh, for the glory of God and for the extent, extension of his kingdom. But I love verse Verse, eight, verse 18, it says, but if not, in the new NIV and the NASB translation, it says, but even if not. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, so there's a, it's a stronger emphasis that even if things don't go the way that we want, they would still not bow down to the world, but stand for Christ. In saying that, uh, I'm going to get the young men to introduce themselves. We're going to go from Nathaniel this way down, uh, and they're going to share a little bit about themselves, their family, uh, their marital status. No, sorry, that's, that's not in there because because your parents will beat you all up. So you introduce themselves, the family, uh, where you brought up and that kind of stuff, stuff. And then the last part is how you came to faith in Christ. So we'll start with Nathaniel. We'll work that. Yeah, uh, Manu Lava Soifua. Uh, my name is Nathaniel Tivoli. I am from the Tivoli clan. Uh, my, uh, I was brought up in probably the holiest part of New Zealand, in West Auckland. Mm, in West yes. Auckland, New Zealand. So, um, I married someone for years. <laughs> <laughs> the holiest part of New Zealand. Uh, but... Um, how I came to faith, I came to faith through the teachings of my parents. Uh, they definitely instilled the fear of the Lord inside me at a very young age. Uh, yeah, so I think that's... that's and how old are you, Thaniel? You, oh, you're 27, am, 30? <laughs> I'm 19 years old, 19 years okay. old. And you at uni, are you, uh, what, are you, what are you doing with life? Uh, currently studying biology at University of Auckland. I mean, you didn't need to show off and say you're doing <laughs> biology, but because I failed science, but that's all right. So, praise the Lord. Good to have you, Thaniel. Oh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm another member of the Tivoli clan. Um, I'm 21 years old. I'm currently studying a Bachelor of Construction, majoring in construction management at uh, the best university in Auckland, yeah. AUT. Amen. This podcast not about those battles, okay, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll let that ride. Yeah, if, um, yeah I, I guess I'm the same as, as Nathaniel. Uh, the way I came to my faith is from as early as I can remember, mum and dad would always uh, read us the Bible, mm. kind of get us through memory verses and also preach the gospel to us each week. Praise so, yeah. Praise. Um, are you the only one? Is this your nephew, your son, or what's the connection here? This is my younger brother. Oh, younger brother. Okay, very cool. And anyone else in your family? And we have uh, an older sister. Sad that you don't want to mention your sister. <laughs> I will mention your name, Danny. God Danny. bless you. Shout out yeah. to Danny. So thank you very much, Christian. Uh, Talo falava, mahalo ni. Uh, my name is Jedediah Natsanyelu. Uh, family calls me Yeti. Um, I'm of Samoan Tokelau and descent. Um, <laughs> uh, I also go to AUT currently, um, and I'm studying a Bachelor of Arts in Education and Sociology. Uh, and how I came to faith, uh, I was raised in a Christian household as uh, most uh, Pacific Islanders are. Mm. Um, I always thought that I was saved, uh, and because my parents were, you know, out in the church. And then, uh, when I was about sixteen or seventeen, I came to question whether I was actually going to heaven or hell. I was like, I actually don't know. And so I decided to try and put my faith in the Lord. Uh, I decided to trust in um, the saving gospel of Jesus Christ and what He did on that cross, the death, burial, and resurrection for our sins. And decided to make that decision. And yeah, life's been great ever since. Praise the Lord. Well, family, you've heard from these young men. We're going to um, explore some of the things uh, that they already talked about in terms of their faith journey and also sort of come back to the to the university side. And uh, if you missed what I said at the start, we all go, we all go to the same house church in South Auckland, uh, uh, Peachwood Bible Church, uh, even though this is not a Peachwood Bible Church podcast. But uh, we, we do thank you. We actually thank all the churches that support our work. And so we praise God for all of those who are, are praying uh, for uh, the ministry of fresh truth because uh, we still don't know what we're doing. So, But praise the Lord, God's doing what he wants to. So uh, today's podcast family is we're going to explore a couple of different issues because we don't often get young people, uh, you know, because I'm old, crusty man now. So I don't often get young people around um, us because uh, I just want to hurt them sometimes. And so it's really cool to, to hear their testimonies and their stories. Uh, but But again... As we just want to acknowledge, family, as we share some of these things, I pray that you hear that the desire is to glorify the Lord. Hey, we, we use our testimonies. Hey, that's part of our journey as Christians, and we come back to the Word, as I read from Daniel 3. Uh, but our desire here is to really uh, uh, glorify uh, God. Uh, and, and, that's, uh, and I know that's the heart of these young men as I've journeyed with them for a little bit. So we're going to talk through a couple of topics. We're going to hear their perspectives uh, uh, and, 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 and some of the, the spiritual things that they're engaged with. So we're, we're really thankful that you guys could jump on. Eh? So uh, because um, I think it's just old, crusty people like me that are, that are watching my podcast. Anyway, um, I guess the first area is uh, the reality for young men following Christ. 
And so we've had some young women come on, and that was quite cool because we got a different perspective uh, that was from a different generation. And so I'd like to go around, especially for this section, and I guess the first question I'd like to ask, but I'm going to go reverse if that's all right. We'll go Yeti this way. And the first question is, what is the reality for young Christian men today? Like what challenges uh, do you think you're facing in the world or in university or uh, in life or with your friendships, uh, friendship circles like uh, you know, for those that uh, have young people that aren't young, like me, but have young people in their homes, maybe their youth groups, but they don't always hear the perspectives of young people. We hope that that would come out today, uh, but also how do we hear these perspectives but connect that back to the Word and to the Gospel? So beginning with Yeti, what's the reality for, for young men? I want to emphasize that part because there's only two genders, uh, so I just want to acknowledge that. Uh, young men, uh, what challenges do you think you're facing uh, in the world today? Uh, I think one thing that comes to mind, uh, a major thing for me, is uh, what defines being a man uh, in terms of like what are the roles, how do I be a good man uh, in today's society, um, and especially I think coming from uh, Samoan roots, you know, that's... The, the example that's presented by the Samoan traditions isn't always biblical. Mm -hmm. And so um, just trying to navigate how to be a, a, a man of God uh, according to the biblical standards and according to how God has written for us to be a man and not get mixed up with the world's ideas of what it is to be a man. So what, what, like, what would you say is some of, and any, you guys can jump in as well, what would you say some of the world's ideas of, of what a man should be? Um, I think a common thing nowadays is a, m a man should be submissive and, and almost weak in a way. Almost um, a feminine thing. Yeah, yeah feminine, yeah, if you bit, will. Yeah. yeah, and whereas the Bible calls us, not that we're better than women, but the way that God has designed the roles is that we're to, to, to lead mm. in, in, in the household, in the families, in the, in, in the churches. And unfortunately, I don't think men uh, are always fulfilling those roles. Okay, praise the Lord. So that's a, I think that's a good discussion between what the world sees um, – as manhood, and what Scripture says as biblical manhood, like you say, that's a that's a that's probably where that lands. Christian, do you have any any responses? What do you what do you think is facing young men today? Oh, young Christian men. Let's be clear. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges, especially for for our generation, I guess, would also be like that little that having to like young men struggling to try and push their faith. Mm. Like try and keep in their faith because, you know, you have all the different views of the world from different uh, different areas. They're all trying to push their agenda onto young men like us. So I guess the biggest challenge is making sure that we stick to our faith and not try to um, not trying to sugarcoat it just so it suits other people's views. You know, uh, because um, yeah, like it's just not being ashamed to tell the truth. Because that's I, I, that's probably one of the biggest challenges, especially in today's today's world, is that no one wants to hear the truth anymore. They want to hear um, like what tickles their ears or yeah, what sounds good to them. Yeah, well, and but we live in an age where everyone has their own truth, right? Yeah. So it's it's competing about who, what you know, Nathaniel's truth, Canaan's truth. Everyone's got the subject of truth, mm -hmm. and yet what we've always tried to push with fresh truth is there is an objective standard of truth mm -hmm. that is found in the Word of God. So I think I love that point. So very very smart. No wonder uh, you're the older brother. So very cool. Yeah, Nathaniel, what do you do? You have anything to add? What do you think? What are the challenges? Um, I think you took the words right out of my mouth. I think uh, uh, kind of an attack on the truth of what manhood is and what Scripture really tells us about what manhood is. Uh, we, a lot of the time we see culture dictating and culture changing what the definition of a man is. And in today's age, like what, what Yeti said, men are almost feminized in this day and age. But then there's the other side to the gutter as well. There's a gutter on both sides of the road where you have hyper-masculinity where mm. men are supposed to be you know, absolutely dominant, the final say in every household. Where I believe like the alpha male yeah, kind of yeah. thing. Where I believe I that I should I be... <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Well, I believe that should be the word of God. You know, the yeah. word of God should be our final authority um, in any walk, in any in any um, aspect of manhood, and that's what biblical manhood is: is that we are to follow the Scripture and teach our family. You know, we're supposed to be prophet, preacher, provider for our family. Yeah, and 
that's what's been forgotten in this day and age. And I'm, I'm reminded of Genesis 3, you know, when uh, the serpent says, did God say you shall not eat of any, of any tree of the garden? And, you know, it's kind of challenging God's word and saying, mm. is this really manly, manhood? And that's what the culture has done today. That's the challenge that we're faced with as young men in this, this day and age. Obviously, you can see family, if you're listening, as you're listening and watching, that we've got some um, smart young men here. I'm glad you guys are listening to me. You know, in all humility, I'm glad that you're paying attention uh, to your pastors and elders and parents, not to me. So, so I mean, and I'll throw this question open to anyone, uh, to any of you, but do you guys get mocked for your faith, like, you know, in your friend circles, like, so, because sometimes Christians can live in holy huddles. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's just Bible study to Bible study to Bible study. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's, it's a great way to grow in the faith. But we should also be in the world, in the marketplace. Hey, not in the world, like <laughs> living in the world, but as a witness, as, as light uh, to the world. So, do you guys get mocked? Anyone can jump in. Um, yeah. Um, not to any extreme extent, though. Like, I'm not going to act like that I'm suffering. Um, it's just, it's like mocks, but still mock nonetheless, where it's like, oh, what a holy guy, oh, what a, oh, your pastor, pastor, I hate getting called that, my friends know it triggers me. Um, so you don't like pastors? No, <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking, Headline. I'm joking, I'm joking, <laughs> just gonna box that one up, <laughs> just box that clip up. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, yeah, just getting mocked for it because they, they see me as like trying to be a goody two shoes. Is that way. when you're sharing to them? Like you're trying to, um, or just living? Just yeah, living either life. or like um, yeah. when I'm sharing to them or when they ask, oh, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm going to a Bible study. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, that's so, me. Same thing for you guys? What's happening? Yeah, I'm, I'm about the same. Like uh, every now and then, it's not as often, but like it's just every now and then when people ask where I'm going, I I'd sometimes say, oh, I'm just going to a Bible study at, at, the, at the chapel. And so some of them would be like, oh, what a holy guy. We get it. Your name's Christian the Christian. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty dry joke for them, mate. Eh? I guess they're reaching, eh? I guess those guys are reaching. For you. But I think I've been uh, blessed enough to have, to also have the other end of that spectrum, like to have some friends that are, they're also eager to, oh, to cool. see what I'm trying to do. Because cool. um, every sometimes, especially this year, uh, when I say I'm going to a Bible study, I have I've had some of the, uh, fellow students to ask like oh like when what when is it what time where is it and so if they have time I try and invite them over and um, get them to see and to share with them as well so yeah uh, I just get mocked by my older brother Christian <laughs> <laughs> but these are the guys that are mocking you <laughs> uh, no for me I I haven't received much mocking yeah. I was surprisingly but I think it's just because I look scary but yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> other than that then, yeah. no, it, not really much because the alpha male so <laughs> um, and this is my next question is about what's it like being a witness at uni and so all of you guys are at uni and you sort of talked about some of the teasing and mocking and uh, you know I came through student ministry. Many of us came through university student ministry. I'll tell you a quick story. We were doing an outreach on the, on the camp, on the, in the quad at Auckland Uni, and these guys started throwing sausages at us from the sausage sizzle up. And then uh, we went up, and we just totally useless Christians lost our witness. Man, we almost like threw them off the, 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 the balcony. But the lesson, <laughs> the lesson in that is to not do stupid things. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I think it's a, but in, in all serious note, uni can be quite a, a battleground, ideo, you know, ideologically, the cultural stuff, the, you know, there's a, so much stuff happening on campus. So if we'll go around this way, but what's it like being a witness on campus or being a Christian on campus? Um, it, it's, it's pretty scary at times, uh, not going to lie. Um, because Christianity isn't the most popular religion as of right now, not very hot with the media. Um, so uh, I, am, I am at times afraid uh, to share my faith and to put out there that I am a Christian, not just because of being mocked, but to get maybe some of those that are like, can be anti-Christian. Sausage or, throwers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Those> yeah. <guys>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it can be quite difficult at times. So and have you met any? Like those um, that are really against, opposed to your faith? Not no one's been like hateful, okay. Which okay. is which I'm surprised at, to That's be honest. Good. Yeah, yeah. We've had I've I've had like good civil discourse with people, like people that have just believed in like reincarnation and okay. all that other stuff. Um, but then yeah, so it can be scary, but also just uh, walking my talk. Uh, that's that's a big thing that uh, I'm I'm trying to work on, and you know not just you know preach the gospel and then 
uh, live like the devil the other day. So yeah, it, it, it is it is difficult. At and times, that, that's integrity, though. Can yeah. I ask another uh, another quick mm -hmm. question? Because um, and I don't know if you're wagging classes or not, but you did tell us that you went um, uh, out with uh, student life. Oh yes. Yeah, and you would and you were giving out. I don't know. Were you guys involved in that as well? Yeah. Oh, cool. So what? Like maybe you can start with Yeti. But what was that like? Like what's it like actively? sharing your faith it's all, it's all good to be sitting in campus and thinking oh yeah I'm a Christian when people ask but when you actively share it in a place that can sometimes or often be hostile you, what was that like for you? I was so scared <laughs> I was um, I had mentioned it to the boys and I was really scared uh, I was nervous like my heart was pounding getting ready to go because I'd never done like open air kind of going out intentionally uh, to share the gospel uh, but these two brothers from uh, Student Life named Kent and Lucas uh, were really encouraging of it. And they had messaged me before it actually happened. And so it, it stirred me and convicted me. I was like, oh, I should go. Like, this is a good thing, um, evangelizing. You know, this is sharing of the glory of God. And so, yeah, it was scary, but it was rewarding. What was it like doing it together? Like, did that help strengthen numbers kind of stuff? De definitely, definitely. Uh, definitely strengthened myself. I was glad to go with the boys. Uh, you know, it's always a kind of a awkward moment, yeah. reaching, going into a stranger's place and go. But it was it was fun. I uh, I think there's there's absolute joy when you are evangelizing and doing the will of God because it is the will of God for us to go out and preach preach the good news, and that's that's what it is. It's good news, and I'm I'm happy to go out and share this good news because it's not just for me. I think it's an overflowing that was inside of me and you're happy to go out and say, hey, come, this is, this is, this is real food. You've got something that you need yeah, to know. This yeah. is salvation. This is eternal life. And yeah, it's just the joy okay. that came with that in that moment, yeah. Christian, can I ask a, a slightly different way, but the, like being a witness and stuff, and so we're talking about like trying to do tra uh, you know, evangelism and gospel tracts and whatever it might be. But what about in your studies? Like, how do you know? How do you honor the Lord in your studies in that sense? Because, you know, I've I've been there. You know, I've studied and I found it difficult uh, to be to to do studies and to honor the Lord in those things. It was it was always hard. Like, so how do you balance that between trying to glorify God um, as a you know, and be a witness through the education part? Um, for me, it's it's a bit of a struggle just because yeah. like. I'm still, um, still, uh, I'd say fairly young in the in the faith, so it's just trying to find different ways to, uh, to see how I can glorify God through my studies. Nice. So, but I guess just the the main thing is just to make sure that I am on top of my studies, just so that um, as we let what we learn, you know, that if if there were other younger fellow Christians that saw me, who's uh, declaring my faith but not doing the studies that could cause them to be like oh so being christian would mean they have to give up schoolwork but yeah so i guess in a way it's kind of me learning how to still yeah just still to still do yeah very good and that's and i think it comes back to what you two were talking about before that integrity right because yeah, yeah. even so non-believers are watching us as christians especially non-believers but then other believers are you don't want to yeah be a stumbling block to their journey in the faith mm -hmm. as well. So I like, I like that, that If response. I could just yeah, jump go, in, because it's something I've been learning from you and Auntie Pina. Uh, is also She's just, a very beautiful woman. Amen, yeah, you amen. Listen, everyone listen to what she Shout says. Shout out to yeah, Auntie yeah. Pina. Um, just in terms of the um, valuing my studies, and just uh, I'm, I'm always reminded by you and Auntie, and it's really encouraged me that in the end, these things have no eternal value. They're just a piece of paper on the wall, I'm waiting to put yours on my wall, uncle. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, like these things don't have eternal value, but um, I'm always reminded by you and auntie to use them for the glorification of God. Mm. You know, I'm starting to be a teacher. How can I use this degree to be a godly teacher in those spaces? So not trying to over glorify studies and education because I know it's a big thing in Samoan culture as well, the glorification of, of, of education, but just trying to come to the roots of in the end, all these things will fade away and only Christ will remain. Yeah, very good. I mean, I'm glad again that you guys are listening to us. And, but I think it is, I mean, it is about fish and loaves, eh? Whatever the fish and loaves are. And we're blessed, to, you're blessed to be at uni, mm -hmm. but then not everyone is going to be at uni. Mm -hmm. But believe, but God has his people in all different areas and industries and sectors. I think the key is, uh, as scripture points to that, is giving our fish and loaves to the master 
And the master does the, the, the blessing, eh? But whatever those abilities or skills or backgrounds that we have, once, we, once they're surrendered to the Lord. But I guess there's a privilege there. There's a blessing when it comes to university education because so few people are there, but even less islanders, eh? And even less Christians, if you think about it. I'm going to jump to um, families, um, if that's all right. And, um, and uh, you guys have already mentioned your families a little bit uh, in, in your journey. And so the first question I have here is, how have your parents influenced uh, your journey with the Lord? That was, that's been touched on a little bit. But if you want to uh, dig in that to the, a little bit more, but we'd just love to see that, that picture of, of godly parents, you know, like, and, and like you think of uh, Paul's life. Hey, he had a godly mother and a godly grandmother. Hey, there, there was a heritage. Oh, Timothy's life. So oh, very good. <laughs> Checking my doctrine. Hey. But Paul was writing to Timothy about these yes, things. Yes. Hey. And so I love the, the the heritage that he had. And you guys are growing up in some, or you've grown up in some wonderful family. So, Faneuil, if we could start with you. But what's what's what influence have your parents and family? Um, and maybe you want to throw in there your your your, your siblings or cousins as well, like family. What's yeah. What's it been like in terms of your walk with the Lord? Uh, so our, our family has always been uh, headstrong in, in terms of we must follow what is in the scripture. And so I've, that, that's heavily influenced my outlook on, oh, my outlook when it comes to my faith. So just, just making sure that with the way I conduct myself and the way I live my life is according to the scripture. So that's how we were raised by our parents is that, is that in scripture? Is it, you know, question all things as it says in Acts, Acts 17, you know, test every spirit, question all things as it is according to the Bible. And so that was the way that we were raised. We were taught to memorize different parts of scripture. Salam or more, more. In Samoan and English. Samoan and English. No Samoan, uh, no English at the house. So <laughs> just trying to um, instill those things into us young. And then the faith part comes kind of came along a whole lot after our learning of the of the scripture, our memorization of scripture. So I'm really grateful for that because we had a whole surrounding around us as well. So our grandma was a, a Sunday school teacher, our father was a Sunday school teacher, our mom also was was heavy into into questioning people. So as Anybody come along with a different doctrine than what she believed? Are you sure Paul said this? Are you sure he wrote this to Timothy? So I was extremely grateful and thankful to to not only our, our parents, but thankful to God. Um, because I know without our parents and without that environment that's surrounding us, I'd probably either be in hell right now or, <laughs> or in jail on my way to hell. So praise cool. God. I'm guessing you guys are from the same family. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 shock, shock horror. Right? Yeah, yeah, breaking news. But, but is there anything else, Christian, that you... I mean, you're the eldest, so you had a different perspective as well. I mean, you're the eldest boy, mm -hmm. sorry. And so you had a different perspective. So, yeah, what was it like for you growing up in that environment in terms of uh, your faith or how did it impact your, your journey of faith? Yeah, I guess for me... Um alongside all the uh, memorizing of the different verses, um, I'd always have that reminder that uh, whatever I do, um, it's Nathaniel's looking at. Because as being the older sibling, um, he is, he is going to be following, or well, kind of, I guess, following after me in a way. So uh, it's just making sure that uh, I bec I'm a good role model for my little brother, just because, uh, just so he, it makes sure that we're, keeping in check and I guess the number one thing that they always uh, reminded us uh, even back then was uh, the commandment of honoring your father and your mother so th that that was like the main the main uh, growling that we'd often get uh, through everything it's funny how that one's always emphasized <laughs> by our parents yeah. <laughs> so almost doesn't matter like what situation it is like uh, they'd always bring it back to scripture okay. just to make sure and so they say you know, how do you honor your parents? You honor them by um, obeying what, what they tell you to do. And you do stuff, even when you're away from them, you do stuff as if they're right there with you. Mm. So I guess that's, yeah, that's nice, one of the ways nice. that they've... Yeti, how about ways. your family? I mean, I know you've got some awesome uncles, <laughs> but in Australia and around <laughs> the world. But yeah, I mean, like for you, I mean, again, similar, similar story, strong Christian families. Mm. Um, so yeah, what was your what's the impact of your family 
in terms of that faith journey? Uh, yeah, very similar to the boys in that sense. Um, yeah, my parents uh, really built, uh, helped me to build a solid foundation in the Word. And um, it, I think it's a privilege that I'm trying to recognize is growing up with believer parents as well, because I, I know not everyone gets that privilege, that blessing, I should say. And so uh, I'm really blessed that my parents were believers before I was born and uh, raised me uh, in the church and in the Word. But obviously they could never make me decide to choose God, um, which they always let us know. And so... Uh, they helped me to build a, a, a understanding, a foundational understanding on the Bible. There was still so much to learn, though, but um, they taught me a lot. Uh, uh, my mum and dad loved the Old Testament especially. Mm. Uh, we went through that a lot as kids. Um, and because my dad was the teacher and my mum is really solid in um, checking up on us. Mm. And so my mum was always asking uh, when we were younger, you know, have you prayed? Have you done your daily devotion? And I always used to think, oh, man, stop nagging me. And now that I've been away from my parents for uh, about three years now, I'm like, man, I wish my mom was here to nag me because mm. those are such, you know, simple but really great things, those, those uh, daily disciplines. Mm. And so um, I always, whenever I call my mom, uh, I'm always grateful that she was such an amazing uh, prayer warrior and she was great with doing her, her daily devotions. She really modeled that. Uh, and my dad, I think, was a wonderful model in terms of a godly man in the household as well. I'm gonna. That, that's, this is wonderful feedback. I'm gonna ask a question that I didn't give you guys on the list, but I want you guys to because I know how smart you are, showing off your degrees and stuff like that, uh, and, and yeah. all your and you've all memorized the four gospels uh, in Hebrew uh, and in uh, Greek. Sorry, but uh, and I guess the the, the question that um, that I was thinking about because. That's such a blessing how you guys grew up, eh? And I didn't necessarily grow up in that way, and many others didn't. And I, and I was just thinking, you know, for... I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I don't care. Um, but, like, what advice would you give parents? So if parents are parenting young people, or, you know, kids, obviously, but even your age or younger, you guys are all in night, teens and 20s and stuff, but even younger... Like, what are, what are one or two things that worked in your life growing up that's really stuck? And you sort of talked about scripture memorization. That's a wonderful thing. Like, we would encourage families. Christians, I'm terrible at memorizing scripture. I try my best and I struggle, but that's a wonderful tip. But are there other things that you saw in your family growing up or extended family that you think, man, if parents do this more then with all humility, these are things that we could offer back to parents and say, hey, this is what I saw, this is how it connected to Scripture, or, you know, that kind of, that kind of stuff. Because how often does a young person get a chance to, uh, to, to, to give advice or counsel to their parents, right? Hey, because honor thy mother. <laughs> it's funny, that verse, it's always brought up. But, but yeah, do you get my question? Eh? And so just, I think this is a really cool chance because we get a lot of parents uh, picking up and, and sending us questions, asking us about um, how to raise their daughter or what, what, how does the Bible relate to this situation for their child? And, you know, which we try and wrestle through those things. Here's a chance. Young men who aren't that far removed from your teens and, your, and really young, um, and then what advice would, would, would be cool for parents that might help them in their raising of their children. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm going to start with Faneuil, if that's all right, if we could yeah. go around this way. But but we could, let's, yeah, if, if you don't have an answer, that's all good. But I was just thinking, you guys are, praise God for the way you grew up. That's, that's not a bad, that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. But for those that don't have that kind of environment or parents that are thinking, how do I raise my kids in a godly way? Scripture is the key. Yeah. Hey, Scripture is the key, and we come back to those things about how to raise your kids in a, in, in, in a godly way, come back to the Word of the Lord. But, yeah, in, in terms of your experiences and what you saw in your journey. Then, please. Yeah, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, as you were saying that, I'm reminded of what we learned in our Bible study at university. Uh, Paul's letter to Ephesus, children, obey your parents, but then it also has a kind of prescription for parents. Fathers, do not raise your children unto, uh, your sons unto anger. And so... That's always the question that we kind of had. How do you not raise your sons unto anger as a, as a father, as a parent? And I guess from our experience, praise God that we are believing teenagers, that um, our salvation is, is set uh, because of His mercy, but also because of the way that He's, he's placed the parenting in our lives. Mm. And I guess what's worked for us in our experience is, is just um, 
being heavily involved in, in your child's life. Um, our mm. parents were always there. Our parents were there for every game. They were there for, they were growling us off for every wrong move that we made. <laughs> and, you know, as, as much as we can make our own mistakes, we didn't have to repeat the mistakes of our parents. Yeah, really. And so, so that they were was open with their mistakes, uh, their mistakes in life very to you open, guys? Very mm. open. At, yeah, at cool. different, different stages yeah. of our life, they would, they would reveal to us, yeah. um, where where they were at that that point in time, so just that transparency and that relationship, it, it's built on the transparency mm. between us and our parents because, um, I don't know, uh, I th I think it's it's a point of edification when mm. someone knows everything about your life. Mm. So I know everything about my brother here, and so any anything wrong that he does, I'll I'll. I'll pick him up on it. I'll, I'll tell him. I'll tell him straight you know. because I know yeah, him, and yeah. that's the relationship that we've built because of forced transparency. <laughs> I've I've lived with this guy all my all my life. I know every nook and cranny about this guy, and so <laughs> and so that's that was our okay. experience growing up. Yeah. Nice, Christian. Did you want to add anything about those things that work? Like, yeah, I I I guess for me it's also like just yeah the same point as transparency but more so from the child's children's side uh, because uh, for myself, uh, it, it takes me, uh, mum will, will always say this, but it takes me a very long time to like, actually open up to, mm -hmm. say, uh, to say, oh, I need help or I'm struggling. Uh, this has been a, it was like a common thing for, for me in the past few years, especially in terms of my studies. So I guess, um, yeah, also just having that transparency uh, because I know as young teenagers, you know, we all want, our minds are going everywhere. We see we see things happening and we're like, oh, I want to be part of this. I want to do that. I want to go hang out with my friends. But then we also forget that, uh, like, even though we may think that, oh, this stuff is, the stuff that our parents is trying to tell us isn't cool enough for, mm -hmm. for, our, for our generation, but I think one of the main things that we often forget is that they were teenagers as well. Mm. So nice. I guess the best people to get in, uh, advice from would be people who have been young teenagers before. Yeah. So, yeah. I and guess I guess the other element is then, as believers, they're giving advice from what their mess-ups back then. Yeah. But then also their, their understanding of God's word now as a believer, that's helped them, right? Hey, that's mm. a, I think that's a wonderful picture that I've learned, just observing your guys' family as well, like there, it's not just there's a closeness because you're blood, but there's a closeness in Christ, yeah. eh, which is a different kind of, oh, I think it's, it's much closer than, than, a, than a blood relation, I think, in my view, because yeah. there's a spiritual connection there as well. Yeah. Yeah. And even with, uh, in terms of um, the study of the Bible, uh, something that we've been doing recently uh, for a few years now is that after every uh, church service or every Bible study or anything that we've uh, that we've gone to that's related to the Bible, we always come back home and kind of reflect with each other just to help to see if uh, we understood and which things we may or may not have agreed on. And so I guess it's a yeah good to have yeah, that's a good practice. those kind of discussions. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Is it is that where you like list down all the mistakes that Fred made? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll just. just <laughs> yes, it shows the that said that. He was really adamant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Faneuil's got it somewhere <laughs> in his yeah, box. Yeah. I disagree. You know, someone who's being excommunicated. Why, <laughs> <laughs> Faneuil? Yeti, did you want to? Um, obviously, you'd like to hear the same perspective, but you've grown. You're also grown up away from your family yeah. and away from your siblings, even. Yeah. Like you, basically, you're a refugee, and so, <laughs> and so, like. What's that been like? Like, like, what advice then in that kind of environment? If your kids have got, yeah, how? What would you say to parents that have that kind of, of relationship with their parent, with their child who might not be there or, uh, might be studying somewhere else, or maybe the relationship's broken down? I don't know, but it's a, it, it'd be interesting to hear what your view was that. On. Um, I think with the kind of a long distance relationship with the parents. I think something uh, that my parents have been really awesome with is uh, just checking up on me constantly. Um, my mom, uh, especially, 
because um, my dad sucks at comms. Um, <laughs> my, my mom is always messaging me, always messaging our family group chat or me individually, encouraging verses, uh, just checking up before I K. We try to have regular calls, uh, not just uh, one-on-ones, but in terms of as a, as a family as well. Um, we, we do a, a, a Zoom Bible study uh, every fortnight, uh, which has been really awesome as well. I think just, yeah, similar to the boys and gathering around the word, um, I think is, as, as a family is, is so important because, um, you know, where else do you learn it but from home uh, as the, the, the first church. But I think uh, another point that I wanted to add to kind of the boys is um, I think also raising kids in a good, solid church. Um, something I've just been thinking about because at Peachwood, um, I think just being one of the Sunday school teachers and just seeing the kids there, you know, we've got ages from two to 14 uh, just coming around and the ability to teach these kids and then they go into church and are uh, in solid teaching. Obviously, they might not always be listening, but I think being raised in a solid church, like these kids that I see, like, like I can't, I'm excited for the day that they grow up and Lord willing, choose God and then the growth that they can have because they've had such a deep, solid foundation at a young age that like, the the possibility of growth could be skyrocketed. So I think coming around a solid church, um, I think is such a, a such a great thing. Family, you sort of uh, uh, yeah. Thank you for answering that because that was completely off the cuff. But I really wanted to um, to to hear your guys' views because um, of the role that your families and your parents have had in your growth in the Lord. Uh, and I really hope that advice around Sunday school relationship transparency scripture memorization, all these different things that the, that the young men have talked about. But our parents, I hope that you guys are encouraged about those things. And, uh, you know, I think that it's, it's one wonderful godly advice out of the mouth of babes in the sense. And so praise the Lord, it was a different way for, uh, for uh, young people to give those thoughts. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about something that's very important to you now, um, being an influencer. Uh, and so... <laughs> And so, and this is one of the questions that uh, that Freddie asked me to ask as well, uh, which maybe because he wants to be an influencer as well, so uh, that's why he's doing his TikTok soon. And so, um, and I guess the question, uh, and I think it's a good question because the modern world talks about influencers, social media, all that kind of stuff, and which is weird because. We have a social media ministry, but I can't stand social media. Hey, but it, it can be so destructive, but then it's so useful as well. Mm-hmm. What biblical characters or missionaries or people have influenced you? And if you if you want to talk about your parents as well, that's fine as well. But in your journey, I mean, still young. Yeah. Obviously, tomorrow's not promised to any of us, but but still quite uh, still young. But yeah, who's uh, influenced? I'll go this way if that's all right. We're going to go the reverse way here, but. Uh, Biblical characters, missionaries, um, you know, uncles uh, named Ronji or other people or church members. Or, I'm not, not trying to pressure you. Yeah, yeah, of, course. of course not, yeah. But you or change the, the lock code at home. If you <laughs> no, no, but in all serious, like, yeah. yeah, like influence is such a big thing in society today. Yeah, like that's actually a job now. <laughs> like yeah. I, I freak yeah. out that it's actually a job yeah. now to be an influencer. I guess that's what <laughs> Canaan is. <laughs> That's what Canaan is. He's an actual influencer. We actually got an influencer in the room. So uh, for those that want to be influenced. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Who, who's influenced you in your journey in the Lord? Bible character, missionary, person? Go for it. Um, I think uh, in terms of a biblical character, uh, I, I would say Timothy comes Ooh, to mind. Yes, um, yes. Especially we um, gathered together as a kupulanga at church. Uh, earlier this Monday, uh, and Pastor Freddie took us through uh, uh, Timothy um, and just encouraging us that um, despite his age, like he was around our age, around the late teens, mm. early 20s, and he was a, a leader at church. Mm. And so I think just his boldness and security in God's word rather than in man's word, mm-hmm. like helped him to to lead well and to, to, to be an effective um uh, leader at that church. So I think of in terms of biblical character, uh, Timothy has been uh, an inspiration for me. Very cool. In terms of um, real people, uh, I'd say especially my dad. Mm. But in all honesty, Uncle Ron. Hey, you, don't you too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you hate praise, but in all seriousness, in the, <laughs> in, the, in the past three years that I've been living in New Zealand, um, I've been living with Uncle Ron Jean, Auntie Pina. Um, <laughs> and... 
being there, although my parents set the foundation, you and auntie have really helped me um, build upon that foundation. I remember the first night that I came here, came out of quarantine, um, and the first night, auntie and uncle sat me down and they said, look, Yeti, you know, we're not here to mother you. We're not here to be um, your parents. That's what your parents are for. Um, we don't care about your studies. We hope you do well. But our main concern is your faith and your journey in the Lord. And like you set the, the tone from the get-go mm. of what my relationship from then on would be with you guys. And so you and auntie have told me so many stories, have guided me, have helped me learn how to study the Bible and how to teach the Bible because I never knew that before. Um, I mean, ended up taking me on a mission trip last year. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, so um, you and Auntie Pina have been a huge inspiration for me, especially in these last three years of my life and uh, of being a Christian, which has been majority of my Christian life has been with you guys. So, yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Yet I received the blessing <laughs> uh, and I'll pay you. Um, I'll give you your money after this. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. No, no. That, praise the Lord. That, let's give glory to God. Amen. So thank you. Amen. Yeah. Christian, do you want to add anything? Like, yeah, I think uh, for me, uh, Bible character, like the first one that comes to mind is would be Joseph. Um, that's that's a story that we've that we've seen right from when we were little, um, right from seeing uh, the musical Joseph in a sickly coloured coat. Uh, that was the one actual. Of the, you went to the actual musical. Nah, oh, on, okay. on, 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 a, on a CD. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So it was just uh, seeing that story throughout our lives. It was a really good inspiration for us because uh, back then. Uh, it was a good message to us to say that you know, uh, despite all that he been he w he went through, he still stayed faithful to God. Mm -hmm. And then even just recently, uh, finding out that the whole story is a foreshadow of the story of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, someone who did nothing wrong but was still uh, pushed down by by everyone else, mm -hmm. but he was still he still ended up becoming the greatest thing that ever happened. Mm -hmm. You know. So I guess that's one of the main influences in the Bible. Uh, in terms of real people, apart from our parents and mm -hmm. our grandparents, um, I guess in the recent days, it's I guess it's some of the well, you know uh, one of the some of the big names that are out there right now, like um, John MacArthur, mm -hmm. Vody Balcom, um, R.C. Sproul, and even uh, Chris Roseborough. Uh, those are the those are some of the videos that we've seen that kind of changed our views of mm -hmm. our faith. Because yeah. Uh, yeah, growing up we we were rooted in our faith. Like we still believe that Christ came and died for our sins. But it's just I guess the 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 different um, methods of uh, interpreting the Bible was slightly different. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this all during the COVID period uh, in lockdown. We just started watching YouTube videos. Uh, it started off from uh, televangelists to like from the people that we used to watch when we were little, and then it somehow uh, moved on to uh, Chris Roseborough. And I guess after watching a few of his videos, it was a bit hard at first, especially for mum and dad, because it went completely against what they believed in. So it was a real um, there was real conviction and. Uh, in that sense, so mm -hmm. just seeing those videos, it kind of opened our uh, opened our eyes to the word to mm -hmm. say that um, the word is final. It's it's a closed canon, um, and what I like what uh, what's his name um, Justin Peters. Uh, one of the good things he says is that th this Bible is a closed canon. If you want to hear what the Lord has to say, it's in His Word. If you want to hear it audibly, read it out loud. <laughs> Very good. So, yeah, yeah. I, that's a that, that COVID journey must have been really interesting. Because mm -hmm. did you say you went all the way from televangelist all the way to like sort of Joel Listin was my hero at that time. Who was? Joel Listin was the hero. No, what, well, you look a bit like because <laughs> <laughs> well, like, he had a line like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he has the same sweater too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same smile, <laughs> same teeth. <laughs> He'd always stand at the TV oh. when it comes on. This is my Bible. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I do what it says. I have. To do. I guess. I guess. Then that says, praise the Lord for those ministries like that that are doing that work. Like people are, and in some way, Fresh Truth does that. But you know, you're talking. You're right. These are big ministries that are doing that. 
videos, podcasts, teaching videos, and, and God's, you, God uses these things for his glory. So that's quite cool to see that journey for you guys. Daniel? Uh For me, it would be my, my dad. So I have four, four people, actually. So for me, it would be my father, my dad. Um, I think seeing him study, study the Word of God really influenced me to, to do the same because, um, I, I, and it made us closer as well. I, I love what Pastor Rodney said when he came to preach at our church. Pastor Rodney from um, American Samoa? American Samoa. Uh, he said, you know, he, he feels a connection to the brethren in Christ much stronger than he does to his own blood, blood brothers and blood sisters. And um, even though me and my dad, we, I'm, I'm a direct descendant, direct heir of my father, it, it, was, a, it was a bonding moment. It was, it was an instant connection when uh, we studied the Bible together, when we were able to um, you know, uncover the truth for ourselves. So that was, a, that was an amazing point uh, of influence in my life because I had never seen my dad do it. Obviously, he's done it before, but I had never seen him do it and I'd never done it together with him. And it was a, it was a beautiful moment for, for a, not, not reconciliation, but it was, it was a beautiful moment to, to connect with my dad so on, cool. on a spiritual level. And, and around the word. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's, so it was, cool. was a, yeah. Yeah, it was a, that was my moment of influence. And from the Bible, I, I'm so glad you read out Daniel chapter 3. That was my favorite, probably one of my favorite yeah. chapters in the Bible other than the, the Gospels. But um, definitely Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Or, or you could kind of say Christ in that yeah, sense. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's the whole story of Christ in their life. Mm. How... We are saved from the fiery furnace, just as they are saved mm. from the fiery furnace. We are saved from the fiery furnace of hell because Christ is there. There's that fourth man in the story, which is Christ Very good. who saves them from Very that fiery good. furnace. And that's that's the beautiful part of that story is that in their their faith, they are saved. Yeah. And, you know, can reflect the same onto us. In our faith, we are saved from the inter- eternal fiery furnace Very of good. hell. And, yeah, that's that's from me. I love the the end uh, near the end of that chapter, and uh, it and it talked about not even uh, their their clothes didn't even smell of smoke, hey, like they were so completely protected by by the fourth person in that in that furnace that there was such a complete protection from 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 the literal flames that were there. So I think it's a wonderful picture that you've shared. So praise the Lord, boys. I'm gonna shift again. I, I like. Picking because you guys are all oh, yeah, attention spans of a flea, like young, young people nowadays. But around singleness, relationships, and sex, okay. And this we, we're going to wind up soon. But uh, I guess the first question that that uh, that uh, uh, people are people are that we want to ask, we want to ask is fresh truth, and it'll be interesting. I'm sure people want to know as well. Do you feel pressure as young men to get married? Like you, you know, you guys. Uh, I'm guessing you guys are single. Yeah. Yes. For now. <laughs> <laughs> or are you just saying that because it's public? <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully you can talk to your parents. But, do, but do you guys feel the pressure? Like Yeti, do you feel pressure to get married uh, as a young man? Like now you're getting a better understanding of the word and relationships and marriage and what Scripture says about about the roles that man does, uh, men and women do in marriage and so on. Yeah. What's what's that like? Um, I did used to uh, feel pressured. I uh, felt like a way to a good life was to be married and obviously that has its blessings uh but as of right now no uh i don't uh feel pressured from anyone um if anything i'm trying to be content in the possibility of singleness in christ okay yeah like i mean i do desire to marry one yeah which which is is a gift? gift amen to that um like I do desire to get married one day, uh, but you're not advertising to yeah. right now, right? <laughs> no. you, Okay, just just in case we get a huge surge, <laughs> huge surge of, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it'll be know, a decline if anything. Sixty-five um. year old woman. That I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, but yeah, like so you're not advertising, but yeah, but you're yeah. open. Yeah, and so just trying to be content with a hey, if the Lord's will is for me to be single, mm-hmm. I've got to be content with that because wow. the Lord's will is greater than my own. So don't feel the pressure. Um, just trying to be content with where I am right now. Fenyo, do you feel the pressure? Oh, definitely. Yeah, from I yourself mean, or who, or like from someone else? Uh, from from someone else. Yeah, okay. From, from you know, from from outside, you always have family members, mm. arranged oh, marriages, and everything. Seems arranged crazy. marriages? <laughs> Whoa. No, no. What? Whoa. <laughs> no, just joking. But um, oh, definitely feel the pressure to be married. But yeah, First Corinthians, singleness is a gift, and uh, 
planning to hold on to that gift as long as I can. Oh, I have heard millions of <laughs> <laughs> When I was at uni, there was a there was a Bible study group, and this and you're trying you're probably trying to be a member of that. And they were called Bachelors to Rapture, B2R. All yeah. of them are married. <laughs> All of them are married, so anyway, it's good. It's good to hear your heart. But lies, lies. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Christian, uh, I guess for me, um, like yeah, I, well, you do get the the odd auntie coming in and being like, "Oh, when are you gonna get married? When are you gonna have a family?" But I guess from a young age, I was never really, I never really felt that pressure to be married because mm. I looked at my parents. You know, they were married. Like uh, in their late twenties, you know, twenty seven, twenty eight. So when I saw that, and I look at myself now, I'm like, oh, I'm still way too young. Like twenty seven, twenty eight. That's a lo- still a long way away. It's like ancient. It's like ancient. <laughs> so yeah, it's just uh, it's, I don't really see the the urgency to try and get yeah. married. Nice. Uh, but yeah, like like what um, Yeti was saying, if the Lord wills it, then. Uh, then praise the Lord. Then can I ask, and I really wanted to ask this question. I'll be honest, like I've worked with a lot of young men over the years, eh, working in, in youth groups and uh, counselling young men over the years and different things. And lust and pornography, um, sexual issues, all of those things are just a constant challenge for men of all ages. Eh, let's be straight up. Men of all ages, the flesh and those things. But it's, I still remember when I was your, your guy's age, and I, I struggled in that area, straight up. Mm. I, was, I was a Christian at 18, but I still struggled in these areas and made a lot of mistakes mm. uh, in that time. And so I guess my, my, my question is, maybe if we can go the reverse way, because I just like hearing all your perspectives. But how do you stay pure in mind and action with all the temptations that are out there? We, like, I thought growing up, my time was terrible. Hey, but social media, Insta- Instagram life, people half naked, you look on a billboard, everything is, is hanging out like it's just all these things are out there. And there's enough, t- there's enough challenges in life in general, right? But for men, often we fall in sexual sin, uh, in masturbation, in uh, pornography, in those lust areas. Hey, often there's a fall in that area. And as young men, I'm not saying that you're perfect, neither am I, but how have you... Uh, how have you journeyed in that space? And this is a big question, guys. Like, I really appreciate that you guys are open to answer. If you don't want to answer it, that's fine. But this is, I know this is something that uh, we at Fresh Truth have wrestled with because even Scripture talks about sex. Even Scripture talks about marriage, relationships. Even it points to these things about gender, uh, about those things. And so, um, and I'd love to hear, uh, I ho- and I hope it. I hope I pray it encourages other young men out there that are f- going through the same thing, uh, same challenges. But yeah, Daniel, do you want to want to kick us off and say, well, how do you how do you stay pure in that journey? You're trying to grow in your relationship with the Lord. The temptation is legit, right? It's real. It's out there. How do you how do you keep going yeah, for the Lord? Um, uh, I, I I really think. Um, Thank God for the the study that we've gone through recently with with Pastor Freddie and our and our study of <coughs> sanctification and and I think that's that's paramount in in when dealing with any type of sin but especially sexual immorality um, is is on our journey of sanctification you know prayer reading of scripture you know edify, edification by means of being with the brethren very so good, very good it's it's a it's a matter of following the scriptures devoutly. And um, as as much as you can, and being being have your nose stuck in the scriptures as much as you can, okay. and so that's that's that Very was good. it for me. Very yeah. good. Thanks, Daniel. Christian, do you have anything to add on that one? Yeah, um, uh, for me, uh, when I was you know uh, as a young young teenager, I did there was I was struggling with lust sure. because you know we're all still young, so yeah. I'll. I'll our hormones are going everything everywhere. Everything is firing away. Our, yeah, 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 everything's firing. <laughs> everything's firing so, away. Yeah, yeah, it is. It really is a struggle, especially in today's generation, because uh, the age that that people are having children is getting younger and that's younger. Right. Yeah, good. So that's a, that's a good it's point. it's a real struggle to see because some of the people you thought would uh, would would do well, they you see them a few years later, they have a few children mm-hmm. already, or they've they've gone t- into that direction. Mm-hmm. So uh, one of the 
one of the the things that kind of helps me, I guess, would also be uh, just the continual study of the word. Mm-hmm. Um, even like it is even as Christians, we still do we still do fall to some of these things. Very good. So uh, it is uh, a challenge for everyone, not just non-believers, but mm-hmm. also for uh, believers as well. But I guess the main thing is to, uh, yeah, just to remember that um, these things uh, were made holy by God. Very good. Uh, as something that we've learned they recently. They were designed holy. They were designed Very holy good. by God, yeah. uh, and they were designed within the uh, the confines of marriage. Very good. Uh, so I guess that's another reason why it's a struggle today because um you know the devil has really made a way to pervert this to this stuff Mm. so and marriage itself is under attack yeah Yeah. even marriage um so it's it's a really it's a really hard thing to go through uh even to uh, address for young men because uh, it is a very hard topic yeah. to to spring and up. It's embarrassing. Out of, to talk yeah, about some of the stuff. Of course. And yeah. it is. Yeah, it kind of does bring out that little embarrassment because uh, even though there would be a lot of men that that have done done those things, they still have that conviction to say that what they did was wrong. Sure. So it's. I guess it's just making sure like, that you have fellow uh, brothers alongside you that can encourage you to stay strong in the word. And to make sure that uh, you search for someone in the Lord, yeah, very and good. To wait for God's timing, very good. One of my favorite proverbs, Proverbs thirteen twenty: He who walks with the wise becomes wise, but he who walks with fools is destroyed. Hey, so I think that that point about the needing each other and being open and honest with each other and the Lord, hey, and not 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 just teasing it and playing with it, but this stuff needs to be dealt with. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah cool, Yeti. I mean, yeah, it's it's super difficult, mm. you know. Um, as they say, sex sells, so mm. that's everywhere, mm. especially with technology. It's uh, it's on everything, and it's even getting harder to protect the kids from those types yeah, of that's things. Right. Like, there's so many like parental blockages you got to put on now because of how easy it is to access that stuff. But yeah, it's <coughs> it's really difficult um, d- uh, dealing with lust in, in today's day and age. You know, like with the way people are dressing now mm. you know not just girls but guys too like it's it's yeah it, we, we've become so sexualized and everything has become so sexualized um and it's yeah so it's, it's a really difficult uh journey trying to deal with um those lustful thoughts and 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 but um a, a scripture that uh comes to mind often and that is often uh said uh, at church or even by auntie and um and yourself is uh psalm 119 uh verse 9 uh, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way mm. by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Or how can a man, young man keep his way pure right. by keeping to the word? And so similar to the boys, it's just um, trying to continue to have um, the word constantly meditating on it yeah, and bringing yeah, it in my yeah. mind. Not conforming to the patterns exactly. of this world. Be yeah. Trans- yeah, very good. Yeah. And Romans so, 12, 1 and 2. Yeah. yeah, trying to, if I'm having the word constantly in my mind, it will help me more to slip up Um, and yeah coming around once again to that um, just being around brothers that can support you on those things or being in a a church that can support you in those um, times and I think Pastor Freddie's been really good with trying also not to make it a taboo topic Mm -hmm. in terms of you know because it's constantly throughout the Bible you know sexual immorality and the the struggles of sexual sin um, with the characters like David himself you know a man after God's Mm -hmm. own heart and so yeah and and he messed up Um, and so yeah, it's. I think the the word and the body of Christ are the, one some of the best ways to try and very good, deal with very those good. things. I really appreciate you guys even an- trying to answer that question. I thought those were really wonderful answers. If I was your age and I was sitting in front of a podcast, I, 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 <laughs> that would be my. I, 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 is, is, is it hot in here? <laughs> is, 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 is someone looking at me? <laughs> so I really appreciate uh, you guys um, uh, answering that question and. And I've noticed that you guys have said uh, Fred's name a lot. So I don't know if you guys are paid to say his name or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so no. praise the Lord. Hey, boys, I'm going to um, wind it up uh, now. And I'm going to... Uh, I want to quickly ask a second to last question is... We've, t- we've heard your journey. You're at uni. You're trying to be witnesses. But what are some of the practical ways that you're living out your faith? Now, we talked a lot about Bible studies, um, getting around other believers. But how else are you living out your faith uh, Today, anyway, like whether it be church, uh, ministry, whether it be other places, but yeah, how 
I, you've mentioned also like um, we dragged you to India and Nepal, like those kinds of things. Like we'd love to hear like practically you obeying and living out the word of the Lord. Fenuel? It's a hard question. Um, I, I think I would put it to trying to honor God with my time. Yeah. So just trying to be intentional about everything that I do and not, not be senseless or not be without, without thought in, in the, some of the things I do. Because a lot of the time I'll, I'll be um, I'm really bad at time management, procrastinating. So just, just trying to uh, give my plan to everybody else so everybody else can keep me in check as well. So, yeah, just okay. that, that, yeah, tough question. I like it. I like, and I think that's integrity. Hey, that's between you and the Lord. Yeah, cool, Christian. Yeah, I think uh, for me as well, it <coughs> is it is still a struggle, you know, because um, like we mentioned before, there are different temptations out there, mm. um, and there, sometimes we do fall a bit. But um, yeah, I guess one of the main things is just constantly reminding myself that uh, worship doesn't just stop at the church mm. like uh, worship uh, is a daily a daily thing um, and how, how you do that is uh, by one yeah, like using your time wisely um, also like just making sure that everything that you do is uh, to honor the Lord mm. um, even yeah like just mainly making yes. sure that all that you do is uh, honorable to the Lord so, and and I think in a practical sense, sorry, um, yeah. if I can hop in, uh, what we were taught as as young bucks is is to don't even entertain the thought. If you know it's wrong, mm. don't prod, don't yeah yeah yeah, don't um, don't let it fester, yeah. don't let it sit yeah. Don't yeah, cool. Dora the explorer your way into something <laughs> you you know is wrong. So, Very just good. the practical. Cool, Yeti. So you're talking about in terms of like a practical sense of how we're living out our faith. Yeah, right? yeah, I think yeah, and um, and I like the boys' response mm. too because it's around their personal time and and like that pure that purity. But are there other ways or areas that you have that you uh, living out your faith? Is it like in ministry or mm. in, like I know Christian, you're involved in music, right? Yeah. What what's that like? Mm. Like, because are you gonna sing for us or? No, no. <laughs> American We're Idol. going live. We're going live. <laughs> We're streaming, but like you're involved in, in music ministry, but then it's mm. sort of it's not just playing nice emotional songs when yeah. the speaker gets up. Like you know, I'm not trying to make any hints there, but like, what's that like for you in that journey? Mm. Oh, that journey was a it's a big eye opener, uh, especially coming from um, you know charismatic backgrounds. So we're used to music leading uh, worship rather than uh, the word and mm. it, it became more of uh, the music side of things was more important than the actual preaching of the word mm. so um, yeah back then I was just more into uh, my, my understanding of of music in in the word wasn't that great I was more just doing music because it like it was more emotional and you were uh, good, at it, too. <laughs> nice. good at it yeah so I just I just did it because it felt nice to play, yeah. um, but I guess uh, especially uh, with the new change of of views uh, in this in the past music study that we just learned about, um, we learned about how music, how worship should be done through psalms, hymns, and spiritual yeah, songs. Yeah. So psalms is like um, like the book of psalms, using using scripture from Very the Bible good. and adding melodies to that. So. Uh, and also with hymns, it's making sure that um, as you sing that song, you're edifying God through yeah, really through good. the worship. <coughs> so it's something I'm still learning because yeah. um, we're we're still used to the band leading, uh, but it's it's a it's a nice learning curve to to learn how um, instead of me leading how worship goes, it's just. Um, like me accompanying the church as they worship uh, our Lord. So, yeah, it's, it's a really, nice. really nice. Nice. Eye. That's a good journey. Yeti? Um, yeah, a, a few things uh, since I've gotten here um, in terms of practically living out the faith. Um, been out to the markets a few times. And I know the boys have as well. Um, the markets ministry has uh, helped me 
to gain the confidence to share the gospel extremely because it's so scary out there, <laughs> so scary out there um, doing that work. But it's it's good because it has eternal value. Whether those people come to Christ or not, Christ has been glorified. And I think that's something you've always reminded us as we go out um, uh, as a team. You go to worship. Yeah, go yeah. Worship. It's it's yeah. a way of praising the Lord um, through your actions. Um uh, joined the Sunday school at Peachwood. Oy, we started going there last year. Um, principal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, because I, I love hanging out with kids, and I thought I was just gonna be like like a fun uncle and be like hang out with the kids, and then and then whoosh, <laughs> on the first Sunday I was like, oh no, like we're like literally trying to teach these kids and come alongside and support the parents more because that's where it happens is at home. Um, went on that mission trip like I mentioned earlier. wasn't dragged. wasn't dragged. Um, uh, but that was uh, a life-changing experience going to Nepal and India um, and seeing, because you and Auntie have always told me about persecution, um, the persecuted church that are suffering for the faith simply because they believe in Christ. Um, and it was such a out-of-mind thing that I never thought would happen to Christians because I thought we were living happy, flashy lives. But the reality is that majority of Christians around the world are suffering, and that's something I got to see. Um, and it was, it was a big slap in the face, um, and in a good way, because it made me realize, man, how privileged am I to live in a country where we still can preach the gospel and go to church for now, because um, that might change. Uh, but worry. church won't close. <laughs> it's not close regardless. Amen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was really life changing and. Um, that really helped. Um, and, oh, yeah, and uh, Bible studies at school. Mm. Um, uh, one of the um, men there, uh, LD Lewis, uh, has really helped me in um, helping good, to learn good. how to study and take the study of the Bible. Um, and so being a part of that ministry has been really awesome and really uh, beneficial for my personal growth. Well, um, those are all wonderful answers. And I'm going to let you guys gather your thoughts for the last question, which is around um, any final encouragements that you want to leave to those that are listening and watching. Uh, the Bible study that uh, Yeti mentioned uh, is called Sola Scriptura, and they meet uh, at Auckland Uni Chapel. McLaurin Chapel. McLaurin Chapel on Tuesdays, Tuesdays 12 at 12. To yeah. 12 to 1. Uh, it's not a feelings group. It's not a social group. Uh, they're focused on the Word, uh, but there's many other young uni students there as well. So if uh, you're on campus, you want to come and learn the Word and be around other believers, that are passionate about God and His Word, then please uh, contact Fresh Truth and we'll put you in contact with uh, the people that run, of it, run it. And one of them is my wife, so it's all good. I'll hook you up. Um, boys, uh, I've been really blessed hearing your guys' perspective. I was going to ask you one by one different questions, but I ended up wanting to hear all your responses because it's been really rich in my view. And I really believe uh, the Lord is glorified and, uh, and, and His church will be encouraged by the things that, challenged by the things that you guys have shared. But in terms of the last word, we leave it to the guests. And uh, do you have any last encouragements, any last, uh, yeah, do you want to promote an album that you guys have? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, you know, like, is your TikTok going live? I don't know what it is. But any last encouragements to the Fresh Truth um, family that are listening? Let's see, we'll go this way yeah. and we'll go uh, to Nathaniel in the end if that's all right. Um, I think uh, just an encouragement uh, coming back to the word. Um, uh, John 3.30 has been a, a huge uh, help in my walk uh, ever since um, I was young and ever since I came to Christ. Uh, and it's just simply, he must increase, but I must decrease. Uh, just trying to recognize that in order to become um, more Christ-like is to be less of myself, to be less sinful, to uh, try and uh, recognize that um, what I want in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter. <laughs> Do you know, like I can, <laughs> I can have the the wildest opinions and whatever, but in the end, if it's not God's will, then I need. I'm trying to t take that out and uh, trying to, um, not that there's anything wrong with putting your desires to God, but just trying to really always trying to align my. Uh, my desires to what God wants for my life. And so trying to become less of myself and let Christ become more within me. Mm. Right. Very good. Thank you, Yeti. Reminds me of that verse in Colossians, be, be therefore imitators of Christ. Yeah. Hey, be imitators of Christ. Nice. So, thank you. Christian? Yeah, um, I guess my one would come from, it's a 
pretty well-known uh, scripture, but uh, Philippians 4, uh, verses 6 and 7. Uh, and it reads, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, uh, yeah, it's it's really encouraging because uh, the first the first words of that scripture, it's commanding us, you know, don't be anxious mm -hmm. about anything. But in every everything, every situation, uh, by prayer and supplication, we, uh, despite, no matter what it is we're going through, you know, there is not a time that God shouldn't be glorified. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's, if we're going through a good time, uh, we should always give praise where it's due. Uh, even if we're going through struggles, we should always, you know, look towards our, our, our Savior. And, um, so it's, uh, it's, and how it says, you know, to let your requests be made known to God, uh, even though God knows what you ask for <laughs> before you even say it, it still is a good, uh, he still does want you to communicate with him Very through your good. prayer. So it's, and uh, there was some commentaries I saw on this verse that say, a lot of the times our prayers aren't answered because we don't request to God. We always pray and say, oh, this is happening, Lord, why is this happening? But um, our requests aren't put forward. But it's it's just a good reminder to say that in any in every situation we always must uh, put forth our our uh, what's in our hearts to to God, and the encouragement for what what we receive after that is uh, the peace from God, um, and this peace it surpasses all understanding, uh, it even surpasses the understanding of um, uh, the, the the apostles and uh, all the uh, the disciples and everyone in the Bible. So no one in this world can understand. A human what, understanding. A human yeah, understanding, yeah. yeah. So no one can understand what it is that God can give us, yeah. the peace that we get. But it's also a good thing to look forward to, you know, because if it's the peace is so great that it will guard our minds and our hearts through, through Jesus Christ. So mm. it's a nice way to say that... Um, because Jesus, cross, uh, Jesus Christ died on that cross for our sins, um, that peace that we can get from uh, us unloading our sins to say, hey, I believe that Jesus Christ paid for my sins on that cross mm -hmm. and that now I am washed clean. I am now put, my name is now written in the book of life. Um, I, am look forward, I look forward to receiving that peace from God. Very good. And, yeah. very, very good. Thank you very much, Christian. Praise the Lord. Daniel, do you want to end this off? Uh, short encouragement, not like the sermon that happened over <laughs> here. But, uh, just a short encouragement. They were good sermons. <laughs> very good. Short encouragement. One of the one of the memory points from my childhood is uh, Psalms chapter one, verse one and two. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Uh, I love the Hebrew there for the word blessed. It, it says, uh, it means happiness, to be happy or content. And, you know, from, from doing the word of God, from listening and putting into practice the word of God, from staying away from the, the things that he tells us to stay away from, um, from, stay, from staying away from the counsel of the ungodly or not sitting in the path of, or standing in the path of sinners, you know, we we're happy. You know, it's it's a it's a joy. It's it's we are meant to be content to follow the word of God, and um, yeah, that's my encouragement for all the brethren to be content and happy to follow the will of God. And yep, very good. Hey, on that note, on behalf of Fresh Truth, uh, we just want to uh, glorify the Lord uh, and say thank you to these young men for jumping on. They were nervous. I think they did a wonderful job in sharing. Um, sharing about the goodness of God. And so just on behalf of the Fresh True family, thank you very much, Yeti and Christian and Nathaniel. Uh, your eternal rewards <laughs> uh, 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 are growing uh, because our budget is zero. So your eternal rewards are there. But in all seriousness, I was really encouraged. I was really blessed personally. And I know that those that have been listening and watching who have been asking, where's our podcast? Because we haven't done one for a long time. Uh, and so I'm really glad that we can lead 2024 off with this one. So... 
To God alone be the glory. Thank you again to the Fresh Truth uh, people and family that are, that are watching and listening. And thanks again to our brother Canaan for all of uh, his tireless work for this ministry. To God alone be the glory. To fast we fall. Cause God's always with you. Say, the loss of the bigger picture.